Welcome to How to Catch. In this brand new series, I will be showing you how to catch different species from a boat. In this video, I will be talking about black bream. At the end of this film, you will know where you can locate black bream, when you should catch black bream, how to tie a devastating bream rig, and what's the ideal rod and reel combo. Let's begin. Right, so the first part of the video will be looking at where we can find black bream and what uh, areas that they like to hang around in. Now, black bream primarily like reef and wrecks, but it does depend on what time of year. Now, reef fishing is normally best from about late April uh, into May and, uh, and early June, July. Now, I'm picking an area uh, which I don't usually fish, uh, just so I'm not giving out anyone to private marks. Well, I might be accidentally, but I'm not purposely giving out any marks. I fish these marks a little bit, um, but I've not been given any marks here. I'm literally just using uh, a generic area and I've picked out a few marks that I think would be good and which you should be looking out for. The unit that I'm using is a Garmin 9SV. It's an Echomax UHD2 and uh, it's got loaded with the uh, relief shading here. So we're going to start by looking at an area of reef. Now this reef here is called Kingsmere. It's part of a marine conservation zone, which means you can only fish certain parts uh, of it. So if we zoom into the relief shading here, we can see that it's absolutely loaded with with rock and, and structure, um, as you can see see here. Now, the bream like this because it's a, it's a breeding ground for them. And generally speaking, they will come here uh, in sort of May time, June time, and they'll do all of their spawning and they'll lay all of their eggs. And there's a lot of black bream nests in this area. Um, so yeah, as we were saying, around about May, June time, this is where that they live. They live in reef systems like this. Now, this sort of area, you can drift this uh, along the boat, just using your, your baits and your rigs, which we'll talk about a little later, so you're not putting any anchor in here. Uh, or you can also anchor certain parts of this reef with uh, with a sort of sacrificial anchor or a bit of rebar. So when you do pull in the anchor, you're not going to get it stuck. It's an extremely snaggy bit of uh, of reef here. But Kingsmere, very popular, very well-known mark. So I don't mind uh, showing you that. But just make sure, as it's marine conservation zone, that you're fishing the correct areas. So on the relief shading, if you're looking for black bream along the south coast, you want to be looking for that sort of area. Uh, not so much the sand. Uh, yeah, you want to be looking for a little bit of reef. Obviously you'll fish, you will catch them all along the bottom here where the sand joins the reef. That can be quite effective, uh, less snaggy as well. We'll just zoom out and we'll try and find another little area which might be good for you. So it's a little bit slow this fish finder and I think it's because I've not downloaded the maps properly. Um, I think it will probably speed up with time. Kingston Rocks, that can be another good area, but that's not where I'm going to choose. I'm going to go over to Bogner Rocks. Bogner Rocks, fantastic for species like wrasse, bass, a lot of conga as well on Bogner Rocks, a lot of pollock. But there is also black bream. I've caught some quite nice ones there before. So again, when this loads up, you can see it's full of rocks. Now the darker shading here, which I'll zoom into, this red shading will uh, basically mean the those rocks are more elevated. They stand higher up because they're, they're darker in colour. So all this area here would be more snaggy than, say, around here, uh, theoretically anyway. So yeah, that's another good area to try. Now, that's for, say, May, June, July, a little bit of August time. You'll find them up to September, but they move off to wrecks, the big ones, um, from sort of late August, September, October, they move to wrecks. Now, let's find a wreck which looks half decent. I don't think there's going to be much 
relief shading on that one. Uh, oh, there is a little bit. Now, it's quite a small wreck, this one. But you'll also find them milling around wrecks. Now, another option, you can drift wrecks with baits, uh, or you can anchor up near them and also fish with your baited rigs uh, on anchor as well. So wrecks are another good prime big black bream hot spot, if you like, uh, in the later parts of the year. So you're, again, you're looking at late August, September, October, that sort of thing. But they will they will sit on them up to November. If we go a little bit further out, uh, a bit deeper water, they won't generally be inshore. These will be offshore. So actually, let's go to a wreck, sorry, further offshore, because that is where they are uh, in that time of year. They are further offshore. So this is yeah, this, this will be a good this will be a good wreck. So the war helmet, no idea, never fished it, but just zoomed into a random one offshore. That I uh, say that that will probably be a good one. That'll hold black bream probably in that that sort of August to end of November period when they when they sort of go to the offshore areas and go into deeper water. So that's what you're looking for uh, when you fish for black bream. So a very quick recap from. May, June, July, a little bit of August, you want to be looking at the reef areas. Um, but from August onwards, for the big black bream anyway, you want to be in the offshore wrecks, probably sort of six miles plus out as a general idea. Right, so now we've learned about when we can find black bream, where we can find black bream. Let's have a look at some of the rigs that you can use and I'll show you how to tie one up. Right, so how to make a black bream rig. Well, it's absolutely super, super simple, you'll be pleased to know. All you're going to need is some Limitless Specialist Chinoo hooks. Obviously, you can use other hooks, but these are the ones we're going to be using. Uh, these are the ones I've caught some very, very nice bream on. But some sort of Chinoo, a weight, and some I like to use 30 to 50 pound uh, mono filament but you can use 20 but i like to use a slightly thicker stuff because if i'm wreck fishing for bream it's got a little bit more abrasion and lasts that bit longer right so the rig itself is absolutely super simple it's basically just a little two hook paternoster with two loops at the end now if i can untie this i'll show you right so i've untied it and i'm just going to show you roughly what this consists of we have one big loop at one end in which the weight gets attached to and that just goes through like that. And it goes through, that knot comes through. It goes over the weight like that. And then you just pull that through and that just holds the weight on like that, simple. Going up the rig, we've got the first branch of line, which just comes off of the main body. And that's probably about an eight inch branch line. And that just goes down to that size two specialist chinoo hook um, and i've actually attached a little loomy bead on this one from uh, from limitless as well just to get a little bit more attraction as well um, whether it works or not i don't know but i like to put that one on there and then we go up the line about eight inches to your next bit of branch line which then again is another eight inch boom with another hook like that we carry on up further and all we've got is another loop and then that little loop will just connect onto your uh, ss quick link which is one of those uh, onto your main line so one of those goes onto your main your main line on your rod and that just basically clips into your link clip uh, your quick link or clips whatever core swivel whatever one you whichever one you want to use and then Bob's your uncle. Right, let me show you how to quickly uh, make this. Right, how to make this rig. I'm just gonna cut off that little bit, because it's got a little bit of kink in there. First things first, you wanna make your loop. Uh, make this loop big enough, just so that that weight can go through. So that's a decent size loop there. And we're just gonna do a double hand, double overhand knot, so it goes through once, twice, and then just tie it up. I'm just gonna come up here just to moisten it with my mouth. There you go, so that's a bit moist, and then you just pull, pull it tight like that. So that creates that loop for the weight. And then obviously you've got a little tag end there, just snip that off. There we go. 
just like that. And then we want to come up about four inches, hold that bit of line there, and then reel off about another two foot, if you like. Don't do any cutting on the other end yet. Just hold that bit of line. Now, this is basically how you're going to create the branch line. Now, there might be other videos which are better at this, but I'm going to do my very, very best to show you how to do it. So hold that on your left hand side, pull up about eight inches, like so you've got two bits of line, like that. Bring the right hand over to the left hand side and then pinch the line together. So you've got a big loop here. And what you wanna do is then get the line going back to your, your reel. You wanna put that through, through over the top here. So you're going from here to there, and you're wrapping that bit around like so. You're wrapping it four or five times. And what that does is it creates a loop here and lots of little uh, turns there and it lots of little turns over here. You're gonna bring that big loop, which is here, through that loop there. Now, come down, hold your tongue, and uh, pull like that. Yeah, and then you're gonna moisten that knot again and then pull it tight. So I'm just gonna come away from camera to moisten that. And then I just pull, pull like that and pull like that. There we go. So that creates a loop in your main line with a knot there. And all you wanna do is go ahead and chop like that on one of your loops. Now you've got one long, long bit of line coming off your main line. And obviously there, we're gonna tie on a hook. Now you can use any knot for this. However, I like to choose a grinner. Um, and I like grinner knots. I'm not gonna try and teach you how to do a grinner knot now because that'll be an exceptionally long video then. But use whatever fishing knot you prefer to use. As I say, I'm gonna use a grinner. Um, you can use whatever knot that you like to use to tie your hook. That goes around two, three, I'll do four, let's do four. Again, pull up, I'm gonna come away from camera again to moisten that. And I'm gonna pull that down. Pull that up a bit. And there we go, that's nice and tight. Just gonna use, I should have really have a knot puller really, just to tighten that. There we go, nice and tight. And we're gonna snip tag end off. And then that's your first branch line complete. So carry on then, let's do this second one. Peel off a little bit more line off, off your reel, that's still all attached, I've not done any cutting that end. Peel off a little bit. I'm gonna come up here, as basically you need to be coming up. If you bring your hook along to the main line, so like branching up, you need to be coming higher than there, otherwise they do generally get tangled. So I'm gonna come to about here. So again, pinch that with your left, I'll go through it again with you. Come to your right. Go about eight inches, 10 inches, bring it over. So you've got a nice big loop. So I'm holding the two lines here. This line's going over to your, your spool of whatever mono you're using. Hold on to your loop there and just twist. So that's going over the top. So it's going one, two, three, four, five. That creates a hole. Bring your loop through like that. And then I just put my tongue like that so, pull up your tongue, bring it in, moisten that one, and tighten, just like so. And I'm gonna come over with, with the scissors. Again, I'm just gonna cut it at the top, leaving a tiny little bit of a tag end on that, it's probably worth noting. You can see, sorry about my nails, it's actually cut a link. I've still got on my fingers, very difficult to get out. Uh, yeah, you can see there, tiny little tag end, just in case it does slip a bit. It never has done for me, but it's worth it. I always leave a little bit of a tag end, there's nothing wrong with that. And then go ahead again and tie your hooks on. Again, the ones I'm using are Specialist Chinus from A Limitless. It's worth noting, I will put every single link in the description to all the components that I've used here. Whether you choose to buy them components, it's totally up to you. 
you can do you can use you can use limitless gear you don't have to use it you this is just what i use i'm just showing you what i use they've been very kind to support this video with our gear and i really do like it all right so just gonna wet that one pull down again should have a knot puller but i don't somewhere in the shed probably pulling that tight cutting off that end with a tiny little tag end and then that creates our other boom so we've got one boom there and one boom there and then you want to come up again about six inches on that line on that spool reel and then going to cut there so now we've got to get rid of that spool so again just going through it again we've got that boom branch line sorry Again, look, it's longer than the top, so it doesn't all get tangled. And you're going to come to the top, and then you're going to do a little double overhand knot. Now, this one can be a lot smaller than the first one because we've not got a weight to go over the top. This one is literally going to be a knot just to connect to our link clips. So, it's again, just going to be a double overhand knot. Like that. And just do that nice and tight. like Just like so and then just cut the tag end off like so. There we go. So that rig is exactly how it's done. And all we've used is specialist chinos from, uh, from Limitless, uh, the number size twos. And we've also used 50 pound, the super strength monofilament also from Limitless. Again, doesn't matter what you use, I'm just saying what I use in this video. Totally up to you whether you use it or not. So there we go, that's the rig made. And as I say, that would just slide through the weight. So you'd have the weight on the bottom and then you'd have your two branch lines coming off like so, obviously when it's tight. That's what it looks like. Simple. So you've learned where to find them, when to try and fish for them, you've learned what rig to use, uh, what bait to use. Well, little strips of squid, uh, cuttlefish, or a little bit of white mackerel belly, absolutely fine. You do not need big baits. You want size of a fingernail, something like that. If you want the slightly bigger bream on them wrecks, try a squid head. They absolutely love them. And the last bullet point then, what rod and reel combo do I advise? Now, I advise quite a light rod if you can get away with it. The reason being is when you strike into a black bream, you need to strike into them hard to set the hook. Even with a sharp hook, if you don't set it properly, it's not going to go into the black bream's mouth. They're quite aggressive. They're picking away. You need to strike up, really move that hook up through the water column and, and, and pick them out. If you don't do that, you, you generally you're not going to catch them. So you want quite a tippy rod. I like to use a light uh, spinning rod. Uh, sort of between 10 and 15 grams. Sometimes I have to go 20, 30 grams, depending on if I need a bigger lead to get to the bottom. The reel you want to use, any sort of spinning reel really, a 2,000 size will do, a 6,000 size will do, a multiplier will do, it can be any reel, but ideally, for the most fun, use a, a smaller sort of 2,000, 3,000 size spinning reel if, if you can get away with it for the depth of the water. Well, that's it. Hopefully, you will have now learned the four things that I said you would at the start of the video and you can go out and catch some big black bream for yourself. Make sure you send the photos over to the Muscle Fishing Facebook page if you've used this video. It's all I like to see what you catch and if it's worked for you as well. So once again thank you for Limitless Tackle for providing the components for this video and if you like them and if you want to check them out they'll be in the description below. Thank you for watching, have a great week, cheers.